Therizinosaurs and Alvarosaurs are some of the strangest dinosaurs, and specifically theropods, there are. And that's largely because of their hands. And for the Therizinosaurs, it's because their claws got really big, including in things like Therizinosaurus, where it's a meter long claws on each hand. So three foot long, almost steak knife like claws from each hand, it's wild. But then you also have the Alvarosaurs, which rather than having multiple claws on each hand, just reduced their hands down to one single digit and just kind of clawed around at things. And it's been hard to say exactly what they were doing with these claws in both groups, but this paper sought to kind of answer that, and they did that with a number of different metrics. First, they actually measured the claws in multiple dimensions and then did a principal component analysis, which is basically just a stats test to say, hey, we're gonna take all of these different variables and condense them down into just one single variable. And this is actually really useful for understanding some simple metrics on how they might have been used. For example, for the Alvarosaurs, there's a lot of diversity in how they would have used their claws. Some would have been a lot better at kind of hooking into things and pulling on them. Meanwhile, others were actually better at piercing into things. This also potentially brings us into more kind of digging areas, where with digging, there were some that were really good at kind of scratch digging in one place, and again, others that were better at piercing into things. And this makes a lot of sense when we're thinking about the Alvarosaurs, because we generally think of them as potentially, at least, digging into wood or dirt, and then eating grubs or insects that are under that wood or dirt. So this does make sense with what we had previously thought about the group. The Therizinosaurs, though, weren't as diverse. They were still pretty diverse, there's just less of a range in that diversity. And this makes some sense, because we've generally thought of them as being mostly hooking and pulling on things. Occasionally, some people have said, hey, maybe they were digging and also doing the same kind of thing with insects. But overall, we right now at least generally think hooking and pulling on things is the main behavior they're doing. And it seems like they could have done that, essentially reached up towards tree branches and pulled them towards their mouth and then eaten the leaves or fruit or whatever off of those branches. But with that less diversity, it's also important to have other tests, including a finite element analysis, which is measuring them, making models of those different claws, and then running them through a computer simulation to understand where the different stresses would have been. And most of them, like Nothernicus, which actually there's a skeleton of it a little bit that way for me, near the museum in northern Arizona, it seems like it would have been able to handle that kind of pulling stress pretty well. But then there's Therizinosaurus, which, while Nothernicus has somewhat scythe-like claws, Therizinosaurus takes it to an entirely different level because, again, they're a meter long. And it doesn't seem like they actually dealt with stress very well at all. In fact, when you see it plotted with different groups and different kind of behaviors, you can see that most of them plot at least somewhat close to one another. And then you have the Therizinosaurus, where Therizinosaurus is way off in the corner for some reason? And we're not exactly sure why that is. It's definitely something interesting and I think should be looked into more, but these researchers suggest, hey, maybe Therizinosaurus was using its claws as a display feature, which is a bit bizarre. I'm personally not a huge fan of this idea because I don't think there's enough evidence for it to be a display feature. It very well could have been. But I think right now the main focus, because everything else lines up so well with what we thought, the main focus should really be trying to examine and see if their model actually works well for larger animals because Therizinosaurus is twice as large as the next largest animal in this data set. It is massive compared to everything else. And even the Alvarosaurus, like those are absolutely diminutive compared to Therizinosaurus. So there may be something that is either soft tissue that we don't understand about Therizinosaurus that helped it deal with those stresses, or potentially the model just doesn't deal with super large animals very well. There's a lot of possibilities for why Therizinosaurus could be the only very extreme outlier. That said, Therizinosaurus does have the most very visibly outlying claws. Like I said, they're a meter long. There's nothing like it. So maybe it was still using them for display. But again, I think that it needs to be investigated a little bit better before we really commit to that idea. Although I do still think it's a pretty interesting idea.